theatre workshop started several years before the war. The people involved were working in the entertainment industry, mostly in Manchester. They wanted to create a different sort of theatre to the teacup comedies and bedroom farces that was the usual fare that the theatre offered in those days. They wanted to create a theatre which had its roots in the ordinary people, like the English theatre had in Shakespeare's day. Until the war, we produced plays and toured them up and down the Lancashire and Yorkshire valleys. And then the war came, of course, and everything had to stop whilst we were in the forces. In 1945, five of us were demobilised. We had, we had our gratuities, we pulled them, and bought lighting equipment and curtains, and we set out, first of all, for Kendal in Westmoreland. We went there because we had hopes of a building which we could convert into a theatre. Unfortunately, the, the, the building was requisitioned and we couldn't get it free. So we started a tour which lasted eight and a half years. And in all that time, we were never more than five weeks in any one place. But all this touring around, we had developed a, a very highly efficient team of people who could erect a stage and dismantle a stage in a record time. But there was very little energy or even time left for the important job to develop a new style of acting and a new approach to production. And it was quite clear to us that we had to find a permanent base, a permanent theatre of our own, if our work was going to develop. We scoured the north of England, all the large cities, because we didn't want to come to London. But we couldn't find anywhere. And then one day we had a telegram from a theatrical agent who said that if we had six weeks rent to pay in advance, we could have the Theatre Royal Stratford, London. And so we came down here. It's a huge rambling building. It's a very beautiful building, really. Although no one in Stratford would believe you if you say that. It also has a, an extremely deep stage. It has a 45-foot deep stage, which we always boast to be about the third deepest play stage in London. I don't know if that's really true or not, but certainly it gave us scope to build interesting sets. One of the things which attracted us to the place was that it was built as a playhouse, not as a music hall. Melodramas did, it did mostly. In fact, it's known locally as the old blood tub. Some people in Stratford can still remember the old theatre. Well, you see, in the old days, when, like, people used to go there, there was, uh, I think there was 10,000 people just found here then, and used to go to the theatre. But, you see, then they used to take fish and chips and peanuts and everything like that, and if they didn't like it, every bottles and all that would go to the stage. Theatre Workshop is quite clear about its attitude to the West End. Many of the West End theatre managers are, are cultured, intelligent men who often have the most bizarre taste in plays and long to do poetic dramas, which we would be frightened to do it down at the Theatre Royal Stratford. But in fact, they can only do the plays which their backers will support. And so the theatre in the West End gets duller and duller and duller because they have to follow the previous pattern. All the modern plays, with which we've had great successes in the last few years, have all been plays which no West End theatre manager would have dared to put on first. The two plays of Brendan Behan, The Queer Fellow and The Hostage. Well, The Queer Fellow certainly was offered to every London manager and to many of those in America too. It was turned down by all of them. When we'd produced it down here and shown what it could be, then the, many managers wanted to have it and take it into the West End. The theatre is in the middle of a working class area. It was built originally to provide entertainment for the Stratford Railwomen, the dockers, people in the market. Theatre Workshop wants to keep its local audience, and this has had its effect on their choice of plays. If you're going to get a popular audience, you cannot afford to do plays which are imbued with a pessimistic outlook. You cannot put on plays where the author doesn't believe that life is worth living. Because working people quite naturally say, if he doesn't think that life is worth living, he may as well go and shoot himself and not worry us with his psyche. I don't mean you can't do tragedies. What one can't take is going to a theatre and finding a sort of death wish on the stage. 
That is something which our audience would never allow us to do. And I'm grateful to them for it. We would not want to go back to the dreary routine of showing working people as buffoons and cretins and doing nothing but plays dealing with who gets into bed with whom. We want to have a theatre which reflects the hopes and fears and joys and sorrows of the people of Great Britain. And therefore we call ourselves a British People's Theatre. The people of Stratford are not all keen theatre-goers, but those who do go to theatre workshop productions have definite views about them. There's a message which the Royal definitely seemed to put over. Far better, in my opinion, than the uh, West End shows, because up there you've got a lot of gloss and glamour on the productions, and personally I like to see a play about real things and real people using the language that ordinary people use and none of the posh bits that they like to put in up in the West End. Well, I'm not in love with the West End plays. I prefer this theatre to any in the West End. I mean, say, they are real. They are really real. There's uh, nothing put on. Because I've been, I've played in a play over there, you see. And um, though we wasn't getting paid for it, we had to do our part right. There's no uh, just do this and do that. You've got to do it properly. And that's why there's such good actors there. At present, the company are working on a new musical about the Soho underworld under their director, Joan Littlewood. Her whole life is bound up with the theatre, and in the early days, she even slept there. Why don't you go out and do some tatting or something? Well, nobody says I don't. I'll do the best I can. Why don't you ask that geezer? Why don't you ask? Look, do you know why they don't come in here? Don't ask me. Well, I'll tell you something. They come in here. The punters come in here. They expect to have a card game. And what happens? They look around. What do they see? Yeah, don't create a very good impression. Well, it's your fault to start with. Mine? I think he's just like him working for you, not that I ever seen him do any work round here. Oh, anyway. Don't do me any favours, will you, darling? Can't we have five minutes, please? I left the theatre very sharply when I was a young woman starting work in it. For the simple reason, it seemed to me the whole thing was not at all the sort of thing I wanted to work in. I was much more interested in hearing real people, wandering around, writing, collecting. I was, I was a tramp for a bit. I wanted to hear the language of our country. I was a cockney and I wanted to see what there was there. And, and to me, the, the theatre that was around in those days, 20 odd years ago, it didn't, well, it's just of no interest. And I, it doesn't interest me today. I know it's brilliant sometimes, dull sometimes. I know it's frustrating. I know that the actors don't get the chance to develop as artists in this country, not any of them. They're not made to feel they're important to the community. How can it be good? It may be brilliant. There may be brilliant directors. I'm not interested in brilliant directors or even brilliant plays. But in a living theatre, which is something quite different to that, and which bears more relation to dreams and, and, and hopes and thoughts of people who live outside the world of the art racket. I think the age of the directors is just about finished, you know. We've had all these great directors, you know, these brilliant people with wonderful ideas. I don't think that's a bit important. I mean, it's that, that belongs to the period when there isn't exciting drama and when actors are puppets. When they're not rehearsing, the actors are encouraged to get away from the theatre and to mix with the outside world. I always say to the actors, go to the streets and the parks and the cafes and the pubs and watch people and don't, let's have art for art, but art from life. I don't think you're looking for anything special when you say what, what type of actor you're looking for. I don't believe in types, I believe that the better the theatre gets, the more individual each actor becomes. That the theatre shall help him to become again a real artist and not the tool of a producer or, or, or the kind of cast away the ragamuffin of, of society. I know what the theatre should be doing, what it's always done when it was flourishing. Give people their identity as a people. Give them pride in their language and pride in, their, in themselves, hope and laughter. That, that's theatre.